Ladies and gentlemen, on Friday this week, something very interesting happened in this country and is definitely going to shape the politics of the Republic of Kenya moving forward. But majority of Kenyans did not take note of it. I took note of it. The IBC Secretariat, led by their CEO, Majran Hussein Majran, appeared before the National Dialogue Committee, which is being chaired or co-chaired by Kalozo Musioka and Kimani Ishungwa. And they made their presentation. And during their presentation, they actually announced to the country that they're now ready with the servers and that if anyone wants to go and open those servers, they are willing because they believe that the content which are or which were in those servers are the same same content which are in the forms. And let me tell you this, Maina. If Raila Odinga were to allow that to happen, Raila Odinga shall have played right inside William Ruto's trap. And because in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence, there is no way that from nowhere IBC can now appear before that committee to announce that they are now ready with their servers. Anybody who wants to scrutinize them can go ahead. I see dangers there. But let me take you back a bit. After the last general election, or during the, the last general election, IBC declared William Ruto as the president-elect of the Republic of Kenya. Raila Moludinga and Azimio Lomoja, one Kenya alliance, disputed those results. They went to the court. The Supreme Court then made their ruling. And in that ruling, they agreed with IBC that William Ruto was the validly elected president of the Republic of Kenya. But Raila Odinga and Azimio Lomoja, one Kenya alliance, said they were not going to agree with that ruling. So after some six months, Raila Odinga announced to the country that he had met with some IBC insiders who actually revealed to him how the elections were rigged. Then from nowhere, we started hearing tension. Then at some point, Raila Odinga issued some four conditions to William Ruto before they could talk. Of course, after those tension, Raila Odinga called for nationwide uh, demonstrations across the country. We all remember how that went. Then Raila Odinga issued some four conditions for him, for Ruto to meet. Actually, before even the demonstrations, Raila Odinga explained himself and he told Ruto that, I want you to meet these four conditions. If you don't, then we are going to go to the streets. Mass action, massive one. The four conditions were four because it's very important for us to understand them. Let me take you through them. The first condition he wanted Kenya Kwanza government to meet was the cost of living. Because by that time, the cost of hunger had reached some 200 or something and Kenyans were really feeling it. The second condition he wanted them to meet was the reconstitution of IBC. That means the seven commissioners, you know, the... Right now, there's no IBC commission. So the seven commissioners uh, recruitment process had begun and Raila Odinga believed that if that were to go on, then William Ruto was actually going to plant his people. So he told him, let us have a new IBC reconstituted by forming these teams. The third condition he placed on the table was for the servers to be open. And I have interest on that. It's going to form the basis of this analysis. And the last condition which Raila Odinga placed on the table was that Kenya Kwanza government stop dismembering the opposition, basically taking members from the opposition to join that side. But let us focus on the issue of the server. After Raila Odinga issued those conditions, Kenya Kwanza were quick to agree on reconstitution of IBC. On the cost of living, because it was going to give Azimio some credit, they said that one was their own issue, policy issues, they were dealing with it. But the, on the issue of the servers, Kenya Kwanza stated clearly that was a done deal. Nothing 
no no nothing to be discussed on it and of course on the issue of uh, dismembering of the opposition there were kind of an agreement or not agreement that members can there's the issue of democracy then there is the issue of party discipline <clears throat> so a team was formed which is now the bipartisan team which is now sitting somewhere at bomas of kenya but again let me take you back a bit some few months ago out of nowhere i think two or less than one month ago i mean one month or two months ago the country faced nationwide blackout it was the longest but kenyans started questioning the objective of that blackout what was the real objective of that nationwide blackout and jomo kenyatta international airport suffered heavily power blackout so there are many people who believe that that power blackout was actually occasioned to allow servers to be brought on into the country remember you can't change the content of a server and as you believes that the servers which were used during the last election which was being displayed at the bombers of kenya was not the true actual and uh, the actual ibc server so and that that server was placed somewhere in um, i think jose kamago's country somewhere where jose kamago was managing so they believe that that is the server that has now been brought into the country and because it was the actual server where these things where these forms were being posted the forms which kenya saw were in there so it means now ibc are actually ready with that server because if you are to do audit then you will be issued with that server the content of that server then you deal with it and you will confirm it the server will confirm that indeed all the forms were there but why is it that ibc are now willing and ready for this audit can you answer me before you do that in case you are watching this channel for the first time please take a second or two click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this youtube will automatically notify you and to the subscribers i want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support this channel cannot be where it is and without any further ado ladies and gentlemen allow me to dive in <laughs> let, let me laugh let me laugh let me laugh in politics nothing happens out of mere coincidence there is no way ibc from nowhere can now agree the servers to be audited a server probably was brought into the country or ibc have now covered all their tracks but why do i believe that this move is actually going to be a blow to railo dinga number one <clears throat> William Ruto's legitimacy. Of course, when Raila Odinga issued those four conditions, William Ruto also issued some two conditions. One of his conditions was that Azimio had to accept him as the legitimately elected president of the Republic of Kenya. And that's a serious issue. The other day when Kalonzo Musyoka kind of uh, accepted Ruto as the president of the Republic of Kenya, you remember how Mark Pakarwa responded to him. That was his personal opinion so let us agree that as things turns today based on the process william is the president but that legitimacy is still being questioned let me just just it's light sorry that legitimacy is still being questioned by azimio so by Kenya by, by by Azimio going for this audit and he's going to prove that okay indeed these were the actual figures <laughs> what will happen these are the actual figures what will happen Ruto will be elected so Relo Dinga shall have cornered himself number 2 it's also going to sanitize Ofula Chebukati and the team Remember, we had the Cherera 4 and Chebukati 3. Raila Odinga believes the Cherera 4 
were actually the the right commissioners. <laughs> Ruto believes and has stated this severely that Chebukati was the hero of the last election. In simple terms, if the servers will agree with the forms, because you all know that Azimio probably did not even have a single form. Because sometimes you check, you say in uh, my in my polling station in uh, Nyakach Kabondo Primary School, these were the forms. <laughs> Okay, they don't have those forms. So they'll just agree. And Wafula Chebukati and the group will be sanitized that they conducted a free, fair, and credible election. Number three, and this is also very important. Who is IBC? Of course, the Supreme Court made its ruling there that IBC is actually the commission. And that the commission should actually work in uh, concurrence. And if you read the, the, the Supreme Court ruling, they kind of said in future, the commissioners must find ways of working together. But who can authorize server audit? Is it the commission or is it the secretariat? The truth of the matter is that the commission, IBC commission, is the only mandated IBC, that can open the server. Not Hussein Majran, not Michael Ochien, who is the ICT manager. As we speak, there is no IBC commissioners. Not a single one. And that's why they can't conduct election. By election, they can't do anything. So it's the commission. So when the secretariat goes ahead and makes a presentation that for us, we're now ready with the <laughs> with the servers. Ready as who? Is someone trying to give the, the, the secretariat some powers for purposes of 2027? Those are some of the things as we should start figuring out, in my view. <laughs> and lastly, if these servers are going to be open and they're going to prove that indeed the results you saw on the portals are the actual ones and the servers are proving, then definitely Azimio is going to be painted in bad blood. I mean, in bad light. Let me ask you this question. Do you think William Ruto and IBC can do something that can give Azimio credit. That they know so well that the servers are not the right one, but they go ahead and give Rail Odinga a server which is going to prove that elections were stolen. Can that happen? Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Think about it. Enjoy. Bye-bye.